You see them? Eric? All mallards. He's coming. He's coming down. He's dropping. I don't know if he's going to drop right here. Go ahead. What I'm trying to do is set it to shoot straight. So when you point the gun, it's going to land pretty much in the center of the field. Okay. Let's try that. That may work for us. All right, perfect. So, that way you'll know where it's going. And then after you fired a few, we'll set it and it'll oscillate and you'll get left to right. It'll, it swings back and forth and Sounds random. Good. A bit more challenging, I guess. <laughs> well, it's more normal. <laughs> Very true. I could tell she was nervous about the idea to begin with. When I talked about what would be involved and how she'd be supported all the way through, she quickly decided that it was something that she'd like to try. At the start, I was kind of like, you're asking me if I want to go hunting. I was like, have I ever expressed interest? But he took a second to kind of explain to me like what the purpose of it would be. This is one of my daughter shoots, so I'd like to try it. So if we go hunting, it's one I'll probably let you use also. So. Sounds good. It's a bonding opportunity for us. It's an opportunity for her to learn more about what I'm passionate about and why. How to shoot a gun, um, why we conserve wetlands, um, how we prepare the food that we harvest. It's not loaded right now, so I'm going to close it just so you can practice, okay? Okay. So pick it up. I wanted to take a second to kind of educate myself as well and realize this is a really unique opportunity. And on here, yep. And pull it up. Point it at the house, yep. You might want to pull it in a little tighter right there. Yep, pull it in tight. Being able to meet with like experts on like the wetlands, experts who are hunters and just gain a whole fresh perspective that I wouldn't have been exposed to otherwise. I'll throw it up. You pull the trigger when it comes up, okay? Pull. There you go. You might want to slow it down just a hair. Today was the first yeah, day I've ever touched a gun. Again, just, just a, when you say slow it down, what exactly do you or mean by Instead of going bang, just look at the target a little bit so longer. So follow it a little bit? Look at it a little longer. Yeah. At first, I was very nervous. It's a very powerful thing to be holding, and a lot can go wrong if you're not careful. So I'll put one in, and you see the timing is about there somewhere. Yeah. As soon as you touch the bottom of the target, let it go. First thing I said to him, I was like, so does uh, this have a lot of kickback? He's like, Every gun has kicked back, and I was like, okay, I guess we're just gonna see a bit. Come around this side. Yep. Cheek down. Pull. <laughs> that was pretty good. So let's try another one. Remember getting the first one? I was like, oh, that must have like, been a flu kind of, and then I got a few more didn't really have a standard to compare to. I'm like, this might just be the average thing. But after talking to my dad, heard it was pretty good and I was happy about that. <laughs> I'll never forget the look on her face when she shot her first trap. Her face just lit up. I could tell that she was very proud of herself and then a little bit of the nervousness uh, went away. Being able to see Dan's passion for it Every time I get one, he'd be like, yeah, like, that's awesome. Like, this is what you did right this time. And then if I miss it, he would know exactly the reason why. Interesting to see our shoulder is tomorrow. <laughs> it, it's for sure going to hurt. Even just after, like. You don't notice it when you're shooting. Yeah, Especially yeah. when you're new to it, like, you're no. so excited. Yeah, you don't notice it. I really enjoyed it, honestly. I was proud, yeah. I was proud. I joined the board of Ducks Unlimited Canada primarily because I believed in the importance of wetland conservation. 
I've hunted for a number of years, but that hasn't been my primary driver and why I'm so passionate about the organization and the work that we do. I think Alexa's gonna be really, really impressed with the work that's been done in the wetland. She's very, very environmentally conscious, as is a lot of her generation. I don't know much at all about biology or conservation. So having that opportunity to like learn more about the environment that like we're so lucky to be able to live in, it that was extremely special. There's a lot of education that is involved with understanding the importance of wetlands and people like Eric are our ambassadors. I'm a conservation program specialist with Ducks Limited Canada. We are in the Pitt Addington Marsh Wildlife Management Area. This is a provincial conservation land that's been set up for the primary purpose of conserving fish, wildlife, and their habitat. It's about just under 3,000 hectares in size, and it supports over 200 species of bird and about 29 species of mammal. This includes overwintering, migratory, and breeding habitat for waterfowl, songbirds, raptors, upland birds, all sorts of things. Seeing someone who's truly passionate about what they do, you can't help but become at least excited about it yourself. Wetlands like these play other important roles. What plants do in order to survive, they photosynthesize. One of the components that they take out of the atmosphere is carbon dioxide. At this time of year, you can see it's turning brown. We call that senescing. So it starts to kind of die off and that dead vegetation builds up and helps to form this carbon storage in, in the earth. So essentially, these plants are taking carbon from the atmosphere and putting it in the ground. I mean, that, that's, that's, that, that's the kind of thing that, it's the miracle cure to, to climate change and all of that. Prior to this experience, I would have been like, they're the exact opposite, what are you talking about? One is trying to protect the lives of these animals, and the other one is trying to take them away. That interaction between hunting and conservation, on, on the surface, it looks like a bit of a contradiction, you know? it's like. If you're trying to conserve something, then why are you shooting it, you know? Yeah. Some of the most passionate conservationists are hunters, are folks that are out there on the landscape, in that ecosystem. Because as you just said, it's, it's when you're out here, it's, it's a totally different experience. Hunters contribute financially, but also hunters want to ensure that their activities are being done sustainably within the landscape. Well, I think the word conservation applies both to hunting and wetlands. Saving a wetland or restoring a wetland, it conserves that wetland, but it also conserves wildlife. Growing up, I was very against hunting. I grew up loving animals. I love nature, and for me, it's like you're taking the life away from something that, you know, was living a great life until you came in. I'm nervous for her because she's nervous. She doesn't know how she's going to respond. I think the thought of killing an animal is really conflicting for her. And, and yeah, I'm, I'm a bit nervous about it. We walked into the field. We got the decoys out. My dad and I were setting up, I think, some geese over here. Dan and Eric were over on the left setting up some ducks. The sun is like just starting to come up at this point, so I'm starting to become more aware of my surroundings. Seeing some birds flying through the sky, and it was, it was kind of nuts. Never ever thought I'd find myself in that situation. A 
when Dan started doing the duck call and I saw the ducks coming in, I was like, I hope they fly away because I, I don't want to see them pass away. I don't want to see them fall from the sky. The duck was coming down and then everyone's like, all right, get ready. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming. He's dropping out. And him and Eric sound up. For a second, I looked away. The duck fell from the sky. Buddy the dog ran out. I saw her coming through the bottom and I honestly had to look away. I've never seen a life being taken like that. It was tough, but the part that brought me comfort is knowing that everyone involved in this process really was doing it to be able to harvest animal and use every aspect of it. It took a bit of convincing for myself to be like, okay, like, from what you've learned, this is not an awful thing to do, although it may feel somewhat wrong. I think she'll feel a little bit of, of remorse at, at first, but it's quite possible that she will understand the process better and understand that this is actually food, and this is how this particular food is, is harvested. Overall, it was a really difficult thing to witness, but I was also kind of proud of myself because I was no longer trying to turn a blind eye and be ignorant to what happens to the animals that I purchase in the supermarket. I think I gained a newfound perspective on the actual harvesting of meat. And whether it's for her or not, I think she'll be proud of the fact that she, she gave it a try. I think he was just really happy that I took the time to kind of try a new experience and educate myself and kind of gain more respect for the hunting community and appreciation for what they do. The activity of hunting is, I think, misunderstood. Anybody that I talk to that, that hunts or has been hunting, they, they talk about the experience, uh, being outdoors, the exercise, uh, the camaraderie with the people that you're with. Those are the sort of things that I remember. It's not the number of ducks I harvested that day or you know, how full my freezer was. I feel like hunting is a sport that has received a lot of criticism over the past few years. As I didn't before, a few people take time to kind of educate themselves on what that process actually looks like. But knowing the real intention behind it and the actual good it can do is important, I'd say. I think if more people approached it with an open mind, they'd see the value in it, or at least the place it holds in, in society. Stand back. Oh my gosh. Woo! <laughs> we got fire. We got fire. <laughs> I think by experiencing the, the preparation of the, the bounty that has been harvested, I think we'll create a better appreciation for her understanding where our food comes from and also the importance of conserving the habitat where that food lives. So we're gonna cook the celery and the onions down. So they're eating potentially berries and all these things from this landscape that's like here, right? Mm -hmm. And those flavors come out in the meat. I am excited to try duck. I'm also 
a bit nervous. I'm not a big meat eater, so I don't really have that palate for me. It just smells amazing. And we haven't even gone to the duck yet. Yep, there you go. Beauty. And look at that, just shrink up. Wow. Yeah, it's nuts. The way he brought the natural elements of the environment that the duck was eating on its own, so it was kind of already in their meat, was really awesome. And it also gave me like another kind of level of respect for the animal. We were able to get out there to harvest this beautiful meat. This marsh is responsible for all of that, which I think is That's like, pretty crazy. what an amazing connection, right? 100%. And our feet are standing in it. Yeah. And it's like right here. I think there's a big misconception that it doesn't taste good or it's hard to prepare and to have somebody like Josh that can take that beautiful piece of organic protein and turn it into this most amazing meal is, is really, really important. Okay, you have to have a little taste. I'm excited. Yeah, grab a berry. I almost want a little another hit of balsamic in there. Give it a, give it a try. It's gonna be super hot. Okay. So make sure you blow on that. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Super good. Like maple, the berries are like so fruity, like amazing. That is incredible. Oh my gosh. Right? Like it's whiskey heat, but it's not like drinking whiskey. So that is our duck sauce. Made of cool things that ducks eat. That's like, pretty cool. Amazing. Josh showed me there is a, another appreciation to have for food where you cook nice meals. It doesn't have to take two hours from, you know, the start to the final product. We did that in like 20 to 30 minutes and it was really simple ingredients from the earth. Most of it's straight from nature. It helps me gain like a new appreciation for that and like even influence me into how I'm gonna cook my food in the future. Dig in. Here we go. Cheers. Cheers. That's really good. In my opinion, the process of consumption of the harvest is, is a big part of the equation. I don't even eat red meat in general usually, and it was absolutely delicious. I was honestly kind of shocked. We're gonna sit down and you guys can dig in, but Alexa's gonna tell you what we put into all of this. Nice. All right, <laughs> yeah. And I'll be right here just in case you know. <laughs> by the floor, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a really nice uh, ambiance, huh? So to start with the duck, we seasoned it with some salt and pepper, kept it very simple. Um, there was some skin on some of them. And what Josh told me is that when it cooks, it becomes like bacon. So it tightens up, gets crispy, as you guys are probably familiar with. Honestly, I have this feeling of kind of like pure joy and like almost peace and contentment within me. Enjoy. Wow. All right. <laughs> this is incredible. Let's do it. Give me a nice piece of duck here. <laughs> that was really great. My early hunting experiences were with people that had done it for years and years, and they were really great with me, just explaining safety, the process, and, and how to enjoy the activity and get the most out of it. Yeah. I honestly don't think I would have been able to step out of that comfort zone if it wasn't for Dan and Eric and Josh to be there to help guide me and show me. So I was just extremely grateful in that moment to have had the opportunity to push the limits of what I'm comfortable with and to learn from all these amazing mentors. Just knowing the type of person my dad is, knowing that he can share something that he loves so dearly and is very passionate about, beyond just the hunting aspect, like with nature and conservation. I know it means a lot to him to have that experience with me, and it means a lot to me to be able to experience that with him. Sitting in the middle of a marsh with mountains coming up beside it was kind of like, is this really where I am right now? It was incredible. It really helped me gain a whole new perspective on everything, which I honestly, going into it, I 
I didn't think it would change this much. To enjoy the, the call it the fruits of our labor is really incredible for right. by Josh. So, so thanks to, uh, to all of yeah, you. Yeah, thank really you guys. I definitely a whole new perspective on hunting and everything that comes along with it. And it's been extremely kind of special to be able to see it from the start, going from shooting that first gun, to seeing the animals being harvested, to seeing them being filleted, is that the <laughs> Clean. <laughs> Clean, okay, I'm yeah. thinking of fish. Um, <laughs> obviously experienced hunter over here. Um, to actually cooking it and being there from start to finish and having, I feel a newfound appreciation for the food that's on my plate. Delicious, really. Mm -hmm.